Well, let's have a look back at the last three years, and um, that's when you first joined yes. the Wage Trading Anthony. I think if we look back to um, 2010, and when we set up the new corporate plan then, uh, the world was very different. Um, we were living in a world of 60% grants, the Audit Commission, the TSA, the regulator, before welfare reform, all of that changed in 2010. So in some respects that was a big watershed moment for us. And I think the things that we set out three years ago now seem to be common, common practice, not just with one housing group, but with other housing associations. So in some respects the world is catching up with where we are, where we were. 2010-11. Yeah. Well, I was on, as you well know, I was on the other, other side of the fence as the chairman of the regulatory body, the great now closed Tenant Service Authority. And certainly in the months around the crash, the One Housing Group did definitely have a near-death experience where a number of things went against you, you know, things like unsold shared ownership homes. And we really admired the way you and my predecessor sort of got your act together and said, look, you know, to recover this, we're going to have to be innovative and do it differently. And I think your two approaches of, um, of cross subsidies, using profits from private sales and contracts for care actually have done the trick and now being replicated. So I think it, it, it's been a great success what you achieved. Yeah. I think if we look back in the last three years, we set a target in 2011 to build 1,500 new affordable homes, and we've met that target. So the core part of the corporate plan has been delivered. And obviously we've been helped by the property market in London, but we were expecting to have to raise money from building 3,000 homes for sale to do that. In the end, we only had to build or commit to 1,600 uh, homes for sale. So we've de-risked the whole thing. And to boot, we've uh, banked 80 million pounds, which will kickstart the next three, four, five year programme um, because of the profits we've now made from the housing for sale. Every penny we make through uh, either market sale housing or market rent housing, is reinvested back into either building more affordable homes or spending the what one million pounds a year now we're now spending on employment and training initiatives or providing um, extra care support services to the most vulnerable. I think another, another uh, area which the board discussed at length. Um, at the away day is, is the value for money agenda. Value for money is one of those things everybody thinks is an absolutely wonderful idea. And I know that a number of initiatives are being taken to cut costs. What about the other side, which is the more difficult side, and that's actually improving the value that we get for our tenants, our key business, from the money we're spending. Any thoughts on that? Well, a good example of, of adding value is um, Arlington. And Arlington's obviously the hostel in the middle of Camden, um, where we have both uh, intermediate rented accommodation um, and hostel accommodation for um, homeless single people. We've also got um, 3,000 square metres of what we call social economy space. And we're using that to help, um, help provide training and employment opportunities for not just our residents at Arlington, but the wider a one housing group uh, tenant community. Government basically, thanks to Mr. Shapps, got out of the consumer regulation area at, at all, so we filled the gap ourselves. But I think there was a, a tenant who, um, you know, came up with a very good phrase that what we need to do as a landlord is create the golden thread between the individual tenant and the board. And we've set up these structures where basically tenants can join area boards. We've got a, now um, a special tenant advisor. And I think we're focusing very, very, very much on mechanisms that ensure that individual tenants, if things aren't going right for them, they can go up the line. And equally, I think very importantly, if they've got ideas on how we can improve our services, they can also go up the line. So I think this is something that 
to have a couple of tenants on your board, uh, you know, that's it, we've sorted that out, is actually in these days nowhere near good enough. One of the things that the area board said to us is, can we look at how we're doing our maintenance service? Um, traditionally, like many other housing organisations, we've contracted out our maintenance service. Um, we're spending about £25 million pounds a year on, on property services, including day-to-day -day repairs. So probably the most important person that one of our tenants sees is whichever contractor is coming yeah. around to do the repair. Now we know, the, we think the contractor market is broken, there's a lot of price cutting going on, it's hard to manage, so we get, we've got service quality up to about just over 90% tenant satisfaction. But to move to the next stage we get, will be very, very difficult. So that's why we've decided to bring the whole operation in-house in a very uh, structured, phased way. So by the end of this next, next corporate plan period in 2019, all our property services maintenance will be delivered in-house by OHG staff. But we reckon we'll save four million pounds a year by bringing in a house. That's partly a VAT saving, partly an efficiency saving. So it hits both agendas square, uh, spot on, both value for money and, and additional quality. Yeah.